Next special test that we're going to be doing are for leg length. Uh, for this, you're going to need a, a tape measure. Uh, and the patient for, for this, the first test is, is called the, uh, well, for both tests, they're going to be supine, but the first test is called structural or true leg length test. And with the sup, uh, patient supine, they, uh, their legs are going to be uh, extended. Uh, and the feet are about uh, 15 to 20 centimeters apart uh, and parallel to each other. Uh, and then what we're looking, uh, and, and hopefully the ASIS are, are going to be aligned. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be measuring uh, the distance uh, from the a ASIS. Okay. Uh, oh, I'll do this one. The ASIS uh, down down to the uh, medial malleolus, okay. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the distal aspect of the malleolus, okay. So okay, so we we take that measure. And we measure it uh, bilaterally. And then what we're looking for is that there should be a different, any difference less than one centimeter or a quarter of an inch uh, indicates that there's a length in the, in the femur um, or uh, the tibia. Uh, this could also indicate uh, uh, coxa vera um, or coxa valga uh, injury, deformity. The next special test that we're going to be doing for leg length is called the uh, functional or apparent leg length uh, test. And again, we're going to have the patient in a supine position with their um, legs extended uh, and uh, their uh, legs are also le uh, parallel. Uh, again, similar the 20, 20 centimeters or so uh, apart from each other. Uh, and for this one, with our tape measure, we're going to measure from the uh, umbilicus down to um, the distal aspect of the malleolus. And again, we're going to do this uh, bilateral. And again, if there's a difference uh, similar, if it's less than one centimeter or greater than one centimeter, uh, or uh, or one quarter of an inch, again, that's an indication for uh, uh, an issue with the length of the femur uh, or tibia, coxa vera or coxa uh, valga uh, deformity. The next special test, group of special tests, is going to be for fem uh, femoral nerve injuries. Uh, and there's only one test for this, it's called the femoral nerve stretch or traction test. And for this one, the patient is going to be uh, sidelined. Um, on the uh, unaffected side uh, with the limb uh, flexed, uh, slightly flexed, uh, and the hip and knees uh, flexed at the hip and knees. Uh, patient is going to uh, keep his uh, back straight uh, and the head is uh, slightly flexed. Uh, and then uh, uh, what we're going to do, the athletic trainer is going to stand uh, behind um, behind the, the patient uh, and just in back of the uh, knee and hip and what we're going to do is we're going to help st uh, stabilize the, the lower leg uh, uh, with one hand and then we're placing the other hand um, on the, the medial knee uh, like so and what we're going to be doing is uh, uh, grasping the affected limb uh, we're going to uh, extend the knee uh, while gently uh, hyper extending the, the hip uh, about 15 degrees and then we're going to flex the knee this will this thus stretches the femoral uh, tendon uh, the femoral um, 
a nerve and if there's a pa uh, pain positive sign would be pain radiating uh, down into the groin the hip or the anterior lateral thigh test this is indication for a femoral nerve uh, nerve root problems uh, pain could also radiate down the medial thigh um, and that would indicate uh, also nerve, nerve root problems. Uh, an alternative to this uh, would be to uh, have the patient in a prone position um, with legs uh, centered, uh, uh, extended, and then using a towel under the hips. 